Now this example is number 22 in the book. It says a baseball is thrown from the stands 32 feet above the field at an angle of 30 degrees up from the horizontal. When and how far away will the ball strike the ground if its initial speed is 32 feet per second? So basically we know that there's going to be some parabolic path here. We're going to throw this um, baseball from the stands at a particular velocity and it's going to fly out here and we want to know when is it going to hit the ground and how far away will it be? Now, I'm hoping that you'll be able just to remember that the acceleration is straight downward and its magnitude is g. So we have this acceleration vector. And by integrating twice, you can get the, the position equation for projectile motion ignoring any air resistance with just gravity being straight down. So you should be able to go from here to here pretty quickly and so you don't necessarily need to memorize this formula it's more important to memorize how to how to get it where does it come from okay now we actually have some initial information in this in this problem oh i wanted to mention something too the value of g if you're measuring things in feet and second the the acceleration due to gravity is 32 feet per second squared now that's that's a rough approximation 32 feet per second squared will be good enough for us um, if you're measuring things in the metric system, then it is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you're measuring distance in feet, you're going to use 32 feet per second squared um, for the acceleration due to gravity. If you're doing it in meters, then use 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's the value for g, depending on the system. In this case, we, we this everything's in feet, right? So, um, so we're going to use um, this value for g in this case. Now we know that the um, that the initial height, that would be y naught, is 32 feet, right? Okay. We can assume that we could just put our y-axis right in the bleachers where that ball is thrown from. And so um, that would mean that our initial x value is just 0. So that's a nice choice of where we locate the origin to make the problem simpler. Um, the other things we need are the initial velocity in the x direction, the initial velocity in the y direction. Now we know the initial speed, the initial speed is 32 feet per second. We also know that it's launched at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So, so we know that our velocity vector has length 32. So how much velocity do we have in the x direction? And that would be v sub naught x. And how much do we have in the y direction? Well, we can see that um, v sub naught x is going to be the length of the hypotenuse times the cosine of 30 degrees. And the cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. So we have 32 times root 3 over 2, which is 16 root 3. v naught sub y, similarly, is going to be 32 times the sine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, so we have 32 times 1 half, which is 16. So now we have a complete equation for our motion, I think. V naught x is 16 root 3 times t, plus x naught we said was 0, so I'll just leave that off. And then we have minus 32 over 2, that's minus 16t squared, right? 32 for g and divided by 2 would leave minus 16t squared plus v naught y, which v naught y is 16t, and y naught is 32. Now, if we want to know when it hits the ground, we've set the ground level to be 0 by our choice of axes here. And so if we want to know when it hits the ground, then we're going to figure out when is the y coordinate, which gives us our vertical um, height, right? When is that y coordinate equal to 0? If I factor out a negative 16, I get, let's see, t squared minus 1, and take negative 16 out of 32, and you get negative 2. And this happens to be factorable, but if it weren't, I could use the quadratic formula. Since it's quadratic, that will always work. Let's see, this factors to t minus 2 and t plus 1. OK, so that tells me either t equals 2 when it hits the ground, or t equals minus 1. Now this would actually be before we threw it, so that really wouldn't make much sense. But these equations don't necessarily know about when time starts or ends, so you can actually you could actually take time backwards, and you'd you'd see the other the other intercept on this parabola back there, when t equals negative one. But here's the one when t equals two. So now we know when 
um, the ball strikes the ground, it happens two seconds after it's thrown, right? How far away has it gone? Well, if it started at an x coordinate of 0, then our x value at time 2 should tell us how far away it's gone. Remember, our x value as a function of t is 16 root 3 times the time. Um, and so if the time is 2, then we get, um, at time 2, we get 16 root 3 times 2 would be 32 root 3 feet. Okay, so it hits the ground two seconds after, after it's thrown. And that's 32, 32 root, through feet, root 3 feet from where it's thrown.